my name is Jason, and I did work at Southwest. It's a great place to work. I, uh, I started there in 1990, uh, 1988 and went to 1998. And uh, just to give you a brief resume, I was manager of customer service training for four years. That is an absolutely fantastic job. If you get a chance to take manager of customer service training at Southwest, you should do it. But then I got the idea that I could do what you guys do. I thought I could manage people, facilities, and resources. So I became manager of customer service for Los Angeles International Airport. That is a terrible job. Do not take that job. Uh, and I happened to go there in my youthful wisdom in 1992-93. Remember what happened in LA in 92-93? Three big national events that distracted us from our service. Or tried to, anyway. You remember what happened in LA in 92-93? Big events. We had, the, we had the Northridge earthquake. Uh, I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Concrete doesn't do this where I come from. <laughs> what else happened? No, not the Olympics. No? Rodney King verdict came back. Some of that riot activity spilled right into the airport. We shut Terminal 1 down for a while. It was a mess. And the biggest distraction of all was who? OJ. Everybody forgets about that. It's impossible to get employees out of the break room where they're watching the Bronco go down the 405. <laughs> Dude, the Bronco, go to the ticket counter. What I found out that year is I'm not an airport manager. I am a people developer. And I transferred back into our leadership development center where we did programs just like this. So I'm gonna come at you pretty fast today with some stuff that I think's true. Um, and if you apply truth, you get results, would you agree? And there's gonna be some real practical, tactical things that you can pull out of this that I hope you take back and use. Uh, in an hour and a half, uh, there's no way I could cover the expanse of Southwest Airlines, but I can give you some ideas and thoughts. But let me start with this. Let me get my prop over here. Um, culture is a, a big deal to me. As a matter of fact, I've written a couple of books on it. The latest one is The Culturetopia Effect. Uh, Culturetopia is my way of expressing this uh, ideal state of high performance and high fulfillment. Right? Personally, professionally, emotionally, relationally, uh, we create this space where there's high performance, high fulfillment. If I were to make a big quadrant up here, and uh, this uh, horizontal axis is here, the vertical, uh, vertical and then horizontal, the upper right-hand quadrant would represent Culturetopia. That's a place where there's high performance and high fulfillment. What are the attitudes and behaviors of people who have high performance and high fulfillment? This is going to be interactive, by the way. So, high performance, high fulfillment, what are the attitudes and behaviors of those people? They're engaged, they're motivated, high energy, deliberate, positive, inspirational, motivational. Usually you like to work around those kinds of people. High performance, high fulfillment. The problem with this is that there's high performance, high fulfillment, which is what we try to create at Southwest, there's a potential for high performance, low fulfillment. So this other left-hand side over here, high performance, low fulfillment, what are the attitudes and behaviors of that person? Yeah, they're, t they're tired, sometimes they get burned out, they get really frustrated. They're still doing the work, but they're frustrated. Somebody pushed their fairness button and they're not happy anymore. They should be in HR, because they're really good recruiters. Come to the dark side, right? <laughs> we have to work diligently to keep people over in high performance, high fulfillment. If we're gonna create this culture of respect, this culture of care, culture of accountability, 